Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for a short story discussion. A short story discussion that comes to us from none, none other. Golly, I can't talk. A short story discussion that comes to us from none other than Papa himself. Papa him. Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway. Now, literature is the only thing that I talk about on this channel. Short stories, poetry, novel relongs little bit of writing. So if you are here by chance but not design and might be interested in something like that, consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you really want to help me out here, you hit that like button that tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. Um, also, there is a link to my personal channel to be found in the description below where I talk about philosophy. I talk about movies. I talk about all sorts of other things. Um, and I talk about some of the stuff that's going to be discussed in here, trying to make yourself a better person. But Hemingway doesn't necessarily put it in those terms. So if you go to that link and click on that channel, subscribe over there as well, because I'm nearing the 1,000 subscriber mark, and that would mean a lot to me to hit that mark. But we are here today with a Hemingway short story called Old Man at the Bridge. What happens... In this short story, we have here a war-torn country, a war-torn... Now, the please forgive the uh, sort of line breaks here. I'm not sure what happened. The Between the internet and my Microsoft Word, this document got eaten up, but it's good enough. We have enough to be able to look at here. A war-torn country, a war-torn town is being evacuated before, quote, the fascists get here. One of the individuals that is being evacuated is a, an old man. Now, the old man is accompanied in this short story. The only two people to exist in this short story, the old man and our speaker, our speaker, it was my business to cross the bridge, explore the bridgehead beyond, and to find out to what point the enemy had advanced. We have a soldier here as well as a little old man. So now that we've got the scene set, what happens... It, well, I'll just read the opening paragraph because a lot of what Hemingway does is Hemingway gives you the entire outlook for a story in a lot of his opening paragraphs. And after that, we are left to redigest the story in order that we get a fuller picture here. So our opening paragraph reads essentially as such. I don't know where the actual paragraph break was. Doesn't matter. An old man with steel-rimmed spectacles and very dusty clothes sat by the side of the road. There was a pontoon bridge across the river, and carts, trucks, and men, women, and children were crossing it. The mule-drawn carts staggered up the steep bank from the bridge with soldiers helping push against the spokes of the wheels. The trucks ground up and away, heading out of it all, and the peasants plodded along in the ankle-deep dust. But the old man sat there without moving. He was too tired to go any farther. That's essentially the entire short story, right there. In many short stories, there is a weird little paragraph that you'll find that encapsulates the entire short story, oftentimes with Ernest Hemingway. It is right there at the beginning. But from that, what are we talking about with this short story? Another thing that is interesting about Ernest Hemingway that is interesting and of note when reading his writing, one of the things that today's academe will sort of, oh yes, Hemingway, oh yes, what a terrible example of a writer, very, very misogynist, don't you know? But that's not necessarily, uh, okay. Fine. You want to look at it that way, look at it that way. But Hemingway presented a world in which there were very specific roles for men and for women. But more than that, there were expectations, different expectations on men and on women. One of the things that you will find throughout Hemingway is a distaste for the passive man. So there's that old saying, um, Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. Hard times create strong men. Okay? So I think that obviously that 
saying has to do with men, but I think that it reflects on women as well. Hemingway definitely believed that. And Hemingway went through a lot of hard times. Hemingway um, saw the the Roaring Twenties and the Great Depression. Hemingway saw war. Hemingway saw World War I. Hemingway was, shall we say, tertiary to World War II. Um, so he has in his writing hard men and soft men. Just listen to this explanation of the old man. An old man with steel-rimmed spectacles and very dusty clothes sat by the roadside. He was too tired to go any farther. Does this sound like a hard man or a soft man? Okay, a soft man. It is. Then we have this from our speaker. It was my business to cross the bridge, explore the bridgehead beyond, and to find out what point the in- to what point the enemy had advanced. Sounds like a hard guy. Right? So we have a contrast, hard man, soft man. Then we have, along this same theme, the old man explaining what he was doing. I was taking care of animals, he explained. Oh, I said, not quite understanding. Yes, he said, I stayed, you see, taking care of animals. I was the last one to leave the town of San Carlos. He did not look like a shepherd nor a herdsman, and I looked from... And I looked at his black, dusty clothes and his gray, dusty face and his steel-rimmed spectacles and said, What animals were they? Various animals, he said and shook his head. I had to leave them. So what do we have here? We have the weak man who was looking after animals when strong men, men of war, were coming, and the men, the other men of war forced this old man out of his house. He, the old man, was shepherded out of his home. The old man who was staying to take care of animals was shepherded out of his home. Here he is leaving. Now, the old man's primary concern in this story is whether or not those animals will be safe in his absence. And he concludes, it's better not to think about them. The birds will fly away, yes, but the other animals, it's better not to think about them. He doesn't have any family. He was just looking after the animals. Uh, He claims he is without politics. So he is with animals, without politics. We have the soldier of the day, being told what to do by politics. So we have maybe people of nature, people who take care of animals, are the soft people, people not of politics, people of politics being represented here by the hard man. So where do we have it here? Yes, they'll certainly fly, but the others, speaking of the other animals besides the birds, it's better not to think of the others. Then he says to this soldier again, the old man says again, I was taking care of animals. He said dully, but no longer to me. I was only taking care of animals. Then our speaker, the hard man, says there was nothing to do about him. The old man had decided he was too weak to go on. The fascists, we are told, would be there soon. So our old, weak man, our soft man, was taking care of animals and was forced out of his place by hard men. Then... Our hard man here is taking care of people, shepherding people, in the same way that our weak man had been taking care of animals. Our hard man, our weak man, insists late in the story, it is better not to think of what will become of those animals I had to leave. Right before, so that happens here. I was only taking care of animals. 
is better not to think what will happen of them, what will happen to them, what will become of them. Right here, he's disguised, he's deciding all of that. Right here, our strong man decides there's nothing to do about him. I have to leave this weak old man in the same way that this weak old man had to leave the animals. Now, I wouldn't venture to conclude what it is that Hemingway is making with that narrative. But there that narrative is, nonetheless. Our hard men create times that weak men have to abandon. Our weak men create soft lives out of which they are driven by hard men. Hard men that are creating difficult times. That is not how the phrase goes, is it? But what happens in a, in a world that has let its guard down is that there is always someone willing to come in and make times a little bit more advantageous for themselves. Those are the types of tricks that Hemingway can pull in a very short, short story. I mean, this, this can't be... This is 764 words. This is a flash fiction. This isn't even a short story. A thousand words and below is what is known as flash fiction, classified as flash fiction. Here we have Hemingway setting all of this up nigh 800 words. That's what Hemingway can do, baby. That is the power of Hemingway. That is all I have for this short story discussion. Literature is the only thing that I talk about on this channel, so if you find yourself here by chance but not designed, consider hitting that subscribe button in order to stick around for more. If you really want to help me out with what I'm doing here, hitting the like button tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. I would really appreciate that. And if you want to uh, further your investigations with me, a weird little man on the internet, consider going to the uh, link in the description to my personal YouTube channel where I talk about philosophy and other things and subscribing over there. I talk about only literature on this channel and I hope to have you back for the next one.